Hey guys, it's Cal with The Lighting Doctor here. Today I'm going to be talking to you guys about how to use landscape lighting to light your trees. It's one of the most common areas that most people will consider when adding landscape lighting to their yard. Uh, I'm going to make a suggestion that the first area that you should focus on, if you want to increase the curb appeal of your house and really make it stand out, focus on the architectural highlights which is the front of the house the entryway that kind of stuff because that's how you're going to increase the curb appeal you're going to increase the value of your home and you're going to get the best bang for your buck out of your lights and that's what people are going to notice time after time when we go do a landscape lighting job that's one area that i will mention to people that they're most hesitant about because they say well i have porch lights i have deck lights I don't need that uh, and we always put a demo so they at least see what it looks like and nine times out of ten that's the area that they love more than anything else we've done in the yard so if you want the best bang for your buck for your landscape lights first focus on the entryway and the architectural highlights of your home second is tree lighting and that's what I'm going to talk to you guys about today and how to go and, and do that uh, properly and the most effective possible you don't need a thousand lights if you know how to properly place those. And I'm gonna talk about things like viewing angle. Where do you wanna see those different trees lit up? I'm gonna to talk to you about uh, different ways to light those, whether it be down lighting, up lighting, the different types of lights that you can do that with, some that work better in certain areas than others, uh, and really get into that area. And also some ways that you can actually light your pathways and different areas like that, just by using uh, the trees that you have on your property to light those areas and not have to load your property with path lights. So that's what we're gonna get into. This footage is courtesy of FX Luminaire. They're one of the leading manufacturers of landscape lights across North America. They make some of the most premium quality fixtures that are out there, bar none. Uh, so we appreciate them putting together this video series. We've kind of cut it up and brought the highlights to you guys. So I hope you guys enjoy this. And as always, if you have questions or comments, email those to me at cal at lightingdoctor.ca. And if you have a project that you're working on and you just want some help and some ideas, email me some pictures and I can help walk you through what might look best on that property. So I hope you guys enjoy this and I look forward to hearing from you real soon. With a, a tree that large, how do you know how many fixtures to use? Um, it's, it's become one of those things where you kind of go a little bit off feel. Um, but generally with uh, anything of good diameter, you need at least two lights. Mm -hmm. But with a lot of these trees, we did three to four on them just because of their, of their size. If you try to just do one light on a large oak tree, you only see half the tree and it really it, it doesn't look very good. That's, that's what I've found on, on trees as large as this, you really need multiple fixtures to be able to compensate for the very, very uh, various viewable angles. Right? Correct, yeah, mm -hmm. and that's, that's one of the big concerns. You always have to make sure that uh, you take into account where is this gonna be viewed from, and mm -hmm. since this is a kind of a sweeping landscape, it's viewable from almost all sides, mm -hmm. so we kind of had to hit those trees from all sides. And on that same topic, I love how you used hex baffles in all the fixtures, just to cut down an even more glare. Yeah, you know, you can get by without them, but uh, anytime you're going to get within a few feet of that fixture, especially in your pathways or anything, mm -hmm. uh, hex baffles are a must. Because I love the effect of, of natural downlighting, because it makes things feel more comfortable, inviting. It cr also creates a lot less contrast that I find. Uh, as we're moving throughout the property. So, Agreed, so I, yeah. I really enjoy that. Agreed. Now, when you're installing a, a fixture way up in the tree, what are some um, techniques that you use to be able to get it there and make it last there for a long time? Yeah, so a few things are really important that you do. Uh, obviously, trees grow. And so uh, you wanna make sure that when you're securing it, uh, you do it in a way that allows for growth. Mm -hmm. And um, there's a few different methods of doing that. Um, uh, but w one thing you don't really wanna do is just uh, pin it as hard as you can to the tree. It may look good for a few weeks or months, uh, but pretty soon that wire is gonna get embedded or, mm -hmm. or break and you may get a short or something. So uh, paying attention to those little things are, are always good. Definitely using things that won't rust or corrode, so stainless steel components. I even like to use the, uh, uh, the zip ties that allow to, to provide room for the cable to, to move up as it grows in terms of length, as well as to allow you to, to be able to add to your maintenance plan to, to allow for the growth of the tree as well. Yeah, and I agree, and that's a method we've uh, recently adopted, and we've had really good success with that, that same method. So Mike, we're at the center of the driveway here. It looks like a roundabout section of the driveway, right? And this looks like a, a pretty important section of the area. Can you tell me about it? Yeah, absolutely. This is a, a very important part of the, part of the area, mm -hmm. and it has a, a beautiful ironwood in the center 
which is like a very desirable tree. Very, it lends itself to lighting very well. Okay. Um, so we have um, several aspects of lighting. We have up lights. We have hanging down lights, mm -hmm. soft hanging down lights. We have directional down lights pointed in order to all kind of do their own job and uh, really bring all aspects of the lighting to full bloom in this area. Well, that's a great point about they're all doing their own job. So what, what job specifically are the up lights doing here in the ingrates? Okay, the ingrates, now these um, give us a nice spread of lighting and, and kind of shows the texture of the underneath of the tree. Uh -huh. You see the benefits from that, from, you know, all the underside of the beautiful tree and all the all the foliage and everything like that. Now you use three of them. Why, why three of them? No, there's actually one? four here. Oh, four. And, and, and because, um, you know, in this type of an area, it's very important from all angles and there's going to be people viewing this from every side and I, I don't want there to be a weak side. Mm -hmm. So I... Uh, try to give it um, 360 degrees of coverage. Great, so so why use an ingrade as opposed to more of a, a stake mounted up light? Well, I just, for me, I prefer not being able to see the source of the light ever. The KG is actually one of my favorite fixtures. Uh, it's, it's virtually bulletproof. It cannot be maladjusted by uh, errant landscapers. You can step on it and all kinds of things and it won't change the adjustability of it. Mm -hmm. um, it fits virtually uh, uh, imperceptible to the ground, you can't see in it, it's fully adjustable, there's just a lot of things that I really appreciate about it. And it keeps performing the way you intended. Great, so let's move to another category, the directional downlights. You have yes. JBs there, right. how many are here? Three? Yep. And uh, why use directionals like that? Well, the, the specific advantage of that in here is because of it being an ironwood and, and a lot of the western trees mm -hmm. have really beautiful bark. You know, the client really likes to see that uh, accentuate the beauty of this when it is such a focal point yeah. of when you're coming in. And those really give you the ability to be able to see the texture of the tree, the beauty of it, and it kind of focuses a little bit higher. So you have the underneath part lighted and then you have the downward light. So yeah. it kind of encompasses the whole nature of the tree. Now, how do you know where to aim those directional downlines? The best, most surefire way is to come at night and kind of adjust it. But I mean, just through experience and things like that, you might have to do some fine tuning at night, but uh, you'll be happy with the result. So you mentioned you're concerned about the glare and the end grades. Mm -hmm. How do you get rid of the glare from, from up in the tree like that? Well, um, all of those fixtures come with a pretty substantial shield, mm -hmm. which is fully adjustable. So you have to be kind of cognizant of where the people are going to be uh, viewing the tree from, most likely. But uh, generally, with such a, a, a shield, it's shielded so strongly mm -hmm. that you can uh, prevent the source of the light from being in your eyes. And do you use the branches themselves as as a as a glare protection? That's as well? a very good point. There's a lot of lot of branches. You can kind of hide it back in the nooks and crannies behind there to let the tree kind of work for you in that in that aspect. So here we basically have a typical palm tree. Okay. In this case, it's a big wide palm tree. It's a canary palm, and what we wanted to do was light it evenly give it some depth and dimension. It's an yeah. anchor point for yeah. the yard. And so w instead of just putting one big fat light on it and mm -hmm. kind of uh, flat lighting it, we chose to use two of the NP uplight fixtures. Okay. And so and so why why just two in, in this area? Well, you're really not gonna see it from the back and we didn't wanna see a, a, the beam from the front. So mm -hmm. this gives us enough depth and character and it gets the job done. Because we didn't know if we were gonna go with a wide wash light mm -hmm. or something a little bit more compact. And in, in this case, the NP, it gives us kind of both. Uh... Trees are key to most landscape designs. Trees are traditionally illuminated with up lights with a special focus to ensure all areas of the tree are highlighted from the various viewing angles. Use long shrouds or hex baffles when the light source is visible to your general audience. Focus on lighting the trunk and branching structure of a tree instead of the leaves. Always ensure the tree is properly pruned. When you install down lights within a tree canopy, you can achieve a very dramatic moonlighting look. Because trees are vital to most landscapes, they can be illuminated with color to create fun looks and themes.